So I'm not sure how many people are aware of this story. I myself am a little bit late to the party on this particular subject, but I wanted to talk about this on the program because I feel like this is one of the most important stories of our generation, perhaps, and I don't really think that that's hyperbolic because the outcome of this particular story, the lawsuit that we're going to talk about here, it has broader implications on the First Amendment on freedom of speech, and I think that leftists have kind of dwelled a little bit too much on the cultural aspect when it comes to freedom of speech. Like, we we respond to political commentators like Stephen Crowder getting demonetized and Donald Trump getting banned from Twitter, and sure, those are related to freedom of speech, I think, tangentially, but if you truly want to reach the crux of the issue in America, it is a crackdown on political speech the criminalization or attempt to criminalize political speech that currently is not politically correct. And I'm, of course, referring to criticism of Israel, in particular, BDS. Now, Abby Martin, she is the host of The Empire Files. She's a journalist. She's a documentarian. Honestly, I admire her so much. Like, out of all of the leftists, she's at the top of my list in terms of who I admire. Just her work is so crucial. But she has a lawsuit that is so important. So she was invited to give a speech. And that speech, in order for her to give that speech, it was required that she sign a pro-Israel loyalty pledge that also says that she will not boycott Israel. Now, she refused. The speech was subsequently canceled. And now, as a result, she is suing. So she recently put out a video where she spoke with her lawyer and got an update on the particular lawsuit here. And I want to share some of the details here because this is so startling that every single person should be concentrating on this. Because what her lawyer says, the justification used to crack down on criticism of Benjamin Netanyahu's policies is honestly jaw-dropping. What her lawyer says here it sent chills down the back of my spine because it is extremely troubling. In February of this year, I was supposed to give a keynote speech at Georgia Southern University. Before the event, I refused to sign a state-mandated pledge to not boycott Israel in order to speak. My invitation was rescinded and the conference canceled as a result. I decided to sue the state of Georgia because signing an anti-BDS clause in order to work in the state is a direct violation of my constitutional rights to free speech and to participate in political boycotts. Similar laws exist in 28 states across the country. You can watch the whole press conference with my lawyers, with CARE and the Partnership for Civil Justice Fund on our YouTube channel, which we'll link to below. Joining me now is one of the main lawyers to give an update on the case, Marv Hayden Hilliard of the Partnership for Civil Justice Fund. Thank you so much for joining me, Mara. So I first wanted to get an update on my lawsuit filed with CARE and the PCJF. Back in February when we had that press conference, the lawsuit was filed that day. Uh, Can you give us any updates on what has happened, what they've done to respond legally since then? Since we filed the initial lawsuit, we have filed an amended complaint in this case in which we've also been able to include some of the material that has come out since the initial filing that shows the communications going on behind the scenes in Georgia where they were taking action to stop you from being able to speak in uh, service to the law that acts as a censor against those who support the BDS movement. The uh, defendants in this case have since moved to dismiss, which is what we expected. They've filed a motion to dismiss. We have filed an opposition to that. And there has now been an amicus brief that's been filed in support of your case by J Street and by a Jewish human rights organization of rabbis in the United States who feel very strongly that the First Amendment cannot tolerate this kind of censorship. And so they have joined in this effort because they don't believe that the BDS law is constitutional, regardless of their own feelings about BDS. Just days after this lawsuit was filed and widely reported in the press, Netanyahu tweeted this. He said, whoever boycotts us will be boycotted. In recent years, we've promoted laws in most U.S. states 
which determined that strong action is to be taken against whoever tries to boycott Israel. So here you have a foreign country essentially threatening economic consequences to dictate the constitutional rights of Americans. Then you had Georgia state officials essentially um, citing, I mean, actually citing Israel Netanyahu as part of their defense for these laws. I mean, this is a free speech case under the U.S. Constitution. So why is it that you have a foreign leader, you know, making veiled threats for economic consequences, um, and then you have actual state officials in Georgia citing foreign officials as their reason to undermine the U.S. Constitution here? It's remarkable and fundamentally distressing that you have elected officials in the United States who actually are willing to sacrifice Americans' First Amendment rights, cherish First Amendment rights at the request of a foreign country. And it's demanding basically that you and anyone else sign a loyalty oath to a foreign country in order to be able to contract with the state of Georgia. And the situation uh, is so extreme that in fact, one of the state legislatures, Deborah Silcox, when they were seeking to amend the law and raise that limit to $100,000 to try and moot your case, um, actually said in a committee meeting at the state legislature that she had been asked to take that step by the Israeli consulate and apparently even brought a member of the Israeli consulate to speak in that meeting. Okay, so we're going to stop it right there. I want to direct you to the video itself, like the link on the Empire Files YouTube channel. I want you to go watch the full video there. Um, give them the clicks and the views and the ad revenue. Uh, I think we've seen enough to kind of talk about the implications here. But her lawyer literally said that the Georgia state government is citing the leader of a foreign country to justify their crackdown on political speech that they disagree with. What? Stop for a second and imagine that Mississippi, stay, uh, they created this law and uh, they said, you are not allowed to criticize the government of Russia. You're not allowed to criticize their anti-LGBTQ plus policies or their authoritarianism. You're not allowed to criticize them. And the reason why we are going to pass this law is because Vladimir Putin himself said that you shouldn't criticize me. Imagine if that happened. Everyone on MSNBC, CNN, perhaps even Fox News would be speaking out against this. But lawmakers in Georgia quite literally cited the prime minister of a foreign country as their justification as to why they are cracking down on the constitutional rights of American citizens. That is horrifying. Absolutely chilling. Now, her lawyer goes on to explain that um, the lawmakers in Georgia, once they saw that Abby Martin filed this lawsuit, they tried to change the law and make it more palatable because they know that this wouldn't hold up to a legal challenge. In fact, just this year, a law in Arkansas, which is similar to the law in Georgia, was just struck down by the U.S. Court of Appeals. And as Elliot Setzer of Lawfare explains, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit on February 12th ruled that an Arkansas law requiring state contractors to pledge not to boycott Israel violates the First Amendment. In a two-to-one panel discussion, the majority ruled that the Arkansas law was written so broadly that it would also apply to vendors that support or promote a boycott of Israel even if they did not engage in a boycott themselves. And the court explained that supporting or promoting boycotts of Israel is constitutionally protected expressive activity. The ruling reversed a January 2019 district court decision which had dismissed the case Case and remanded the case for further proceedings. And that isn't the first time that a BDS law was struck down. There's been four other BDS laws struck down in courts because they're blatantly unconstitutional, which is why once Georgia saw that Abby Martin filed this lawsuit, then they tried to change it. It's just honestly shocking that this is taking place and very few people are talking about it. Now, what you'll see is that there's a correlation between an increase in popularity for BDS as a movement and 
these types of laws intended on criminalizing BDS. Now, this is from Palestine Legal. So you can see here, there has been an explosion since 2014 of efforts to criminalize BDS. It was struck down in four states, as I stated. But in 30 states currently, there's some sort of anti-BDS legislation that's currently still intact. And Again, this very clearly violates the First Amendment. And unlike other types of legislation that gets proposed in state legislatures across the country, usually it comes in waves, BDS legislation, anti-BDS legislation more specifically, that tends to stick. Out of 219 bills proposed, 49 of them have passed in state legislatures across the country. So there is an all-out assault on freedom of speech. But the battleground isn't Twitter or social media. I think that's a different conversation that we should all be having about the power of big tech, and I'm right there with you. These big tech companies have too much control in our lives, but the real battleground, the issue of our time, as it relates to freedom of speech, is this story right here. And Abby Martin is actually doing what no other leftist has done up until this point. She's actually taking action to defend freedom of speech. So, I mean, this story is incredibly important. I will highly encourage you to familiarize yourself with the details of this case because it has broader implications on freedom of speech in the United States. Like the fact that U.S. lawmakers are using what a foreign leader says to justify criminalizing freedom of speech against U.S. citizens, that should absolutely horrify every single person.